Hello and welcome to this week on Drinking with Dave. So this week on Drinking with Dave, I am reviewing a vice beer, or a wheat beer, from Little, actually. It's about 120 or 130 a can for 500 milliliters, which is a standard can size here. So I'll just give a little tasting notes on this. It doesn't smell very strong. There is a, a, there's, there's a distinctive smell off it, but it's not an overpowering or pungent smell. It just really smells like wheat. It smells kind of it smells sweet, really, and uh, because it has the suspension still in it, you can see how cloudy it is. It's got the yeast and everything. Well, I don't know if it's all yeast, but it's got the suspension left in it. It hasn't been set. You know, the sediment hasn't been taken out of it. So it's actually it's a very pleasant beer. It just smells like wheat, really. A little sugar, a little wheat, maybe kind of floral hop if they hop it at all. They obviously hop it, but they don't bitter it, you know. It's it's not bitter. Clean. It's, it's, it sounds strange to call it clean when it's as cloudy as it is, but it is actually quite clean. You can see the lacing here, and the, the head retention is actually good. I poured this about maybe six or seven minutes ago, and it's still. There's still a bit, there's still a little head on it, it's kind of, head is very uh, densely packed, like, almost like a Guinness head, or, not large bubbles, it's not a, it's not a lager head, you know. This is kind of a, there's a plant, kind of, it's hard to describe really, but it's a, there's a plant taste to it. To talk about what we're doing this week, the competition for the Canadian Blonde versus the Scottish Heavy is still running. I'll link to that at the end of this video so you can cast your votes. It's currently tied, so we will need a tiebreaker vote cast at some point. The other thing I'd like to talk about is a brewing notebook. Now, we don't have a brewing notebook in a minute. We've been making do with these. These are little leaflets that come with most cans of extract that you get. And the Cooper's ones are great because the Cooper's ones have a little sheet here. And on this sheet, you write down the type of product that you're date, the type of sugar added, the amount of sugars. Uh, the, you know, it, you mark down all of your important particulars, which is your temperature, your original gravity, your final gravity. So it's all it's all very intuitive and very simple. And each of these uh, little leaflets folds out to give you a complete refresher on what you need to do when you're brewing your beer. So these are very good, but I would like to get a notebook at some point so that we can, because right now all we have is a stack of five or six of these sitting next to the fermenter, and ideally I'd like to get a notebook down so we can start uh, going a little more in depth. You can also write down tasting notes in the notebook, so I think I'll do that this week. We were trying to come up with a name for the, the current brew we're doing, which is the draft. I said I was going to do a uh, an American style light lager, but I settled on doing a draft. I decided to do the draft because it's the closest that I found that I thought would be a generic beer. Now time will tell if it's generic or not, but I thought it would be a good starting point. Emma came up with a very funny name for the brew, which is Heineken, and I think that one's going to stick. I'll just give you some notes on visual notes on the beer. You can see obviously that it's cloudy. Um, it's actually showing up lighter on camera than it usually is. It's more of a, it's a slightly browner color than the orange or the yellow that shows up on the camera. Um, the head is quite, the head is quite compact. In um, there's two, there's two main categories of head when you have a beer. You either have a compact head, which is like a Guinness head, which is very fine bubbles and it's very creamy. Or you have a non-compact head, which is you would get something in a lager with larger bubbles and the surface isn't as uniform. But this is quite uniform, so this has been nicely carbonated. It's not overly carbonated, it's just nicely carbonated. If you actually leave one of these beers sitting long enough, it will form sediment on the bottom. I noticed this the other day, I was drinking one of these and I left it for about 20 minutes. And it did in fact pick up sediment on the bottom. So something to keep in mind when you're drinking wheat beers like this that have the suspension still in them, that it may sediment. 
Well, thank you for joining me this week on Drinking with Dave. Uh, next week we will be talking more about the voting for the Scottish Heavy versus the Canadian Blonde. We will be filling in the notebook that I buy this week, and we will be tasting. I'm really looking forward to this. We will be tasting the Bach because the Bach will be ready the next time I film one of these. So, happy brewing to everybody out there, and I'll see you next time on Drinking with Dave. Thank you.